Ladies and gentlemen, fear is an evolutionary emotion that has been part of the human experience since the beginning of time. It has shaped our history, formed our conduct, and defined our actuality. Today, we stand before you not only to rethink fear, but to explore its causes and goods, to partake in exemplifications of those who crushed it, and also give perceptivity on how we can conquer our individual fears. What is fear? Well, fear is a natural response to a perceived trouble or peril. It's evolved to cover us from the most troubled times this world has had to offer. The amygdala, a small algal-shaped structure in our minds, helps us process fear and initiate the fight or flight response. Fear can be touched off by colorful factors such as inheritable tendencies, social exertion, and environmental influences. This can manifest as anxiety, phobias, and panic attacks, and can significantly impact our physical and mental well-being. Habitual fear can lead to stress, affect our decision-making capacities, and take a toll on our physical and mental well-being. Throughout history, there have been numerous individuals who have triumphed over their fear, inspiring us with their adaptability and courage. Nelson Mandela, who faced times of imprisonment and adversity, served as a symbol of perseverance. Malala Yousafzai, despite facing implicit pitfalls for ch championing girls' education, continues her fight even now. These exemplifications show that despite facing these troubles, we can face our fears head on. How do we overcome fear? Ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand that fear is a natural. We need to accept its presence in our lives. And understanding the root cause of our fear helps us tackle it more effectively. We can start by coming into more frequent contact with our fears. This can mean something small and manageable. It's known as exposure remedy. It desensitizes you to the fear or the fear itself. Overcoming our fear gives us adrenaline and encouragement to defeat what's to come. We can learn to develop a growth mindset. This is where we learn to look at challenges in our lives as openings rather than pitfalls. The change in perspective will make it easier for our minds and bodies to tackle our fears. This can mean going on a very fast roller coaster, submitting a job application, or even giving a public speech. We can learn to seek support from family, friends, and even professionals. This can mean therapists or trainers. Humans have been known to work better in a support system, so it's only natural that other people can help guide us, maybe better than we can guide ourselves. Lastly, be aware of your patience and tone. Create a regular routine throughout your day to test your patience. This can mean contemplation meditating or deep breathing exercises. This method promotes and conditions your physical and mental well-being. Fear and stopgap are two important feelings that frequently attend within us. While fear may stem from perceived trouble or peril, hope offers us light, guiding us towards a better future. Well, the question of whether fear beats hope is a complex one, as both play a pivotal role in shaping our lives. Fear can have a massive impact on our physical and mental well-being. Habitual fear leads to growing anxiety, which people need to find quick solutions for. However, these solutions aren't exactly positive. This can mean the addiction to substances, alcohol, or other dopamine-induced activities. Fear can change our tone. For example, it can, the fear of failure or rejection can make it difficult for us to chase amazing life opportunities. But it isn't all bad, because failure, fear can also pay, enhance our tone making it um, easier for us to identify areas in our lives that bear attention and encourage us to act upon them. By doing so, we not only know how to conquer our fear, but we gain a deeper understanding of ourselves. Fear can be an important motivator driving us to overcome challenges and achieve our goals. The conception of healthy fear refers to a position of apprehension that encourages us to strive for excellence and push our limits. This type of fear can inspire us to learn more and grow as individuals. For example, a student who has a healthy fear of underperforming in their examinations 
may be more likely to study diligently and prepare effectively. Accepting the presence of fear in our lives and facing them head on and understanding the root causes is essential to conquering it. In this process, seeking help from family and friends and people around us can be extremely beneficial. By addressing our fears and understanding our weaknesses, we can eventually achieve a state of freedom from fear, which allows us to thrive and contribute to our society effectively. Why do humans fear death? Well, the fear of death has always been hardwired into the human mind, fixed, because it comes with so many other fears, such as the fear of the unknown, the loss of your loved ones, or even leaving behind unfulfilled dreams and goals. People often use the word phobia to describe deep fear or hate, but fear and phobia aren't as similar as you may think. Fear and phobias have some similarities, but they also have some distinct differences. Fear is a natural, universal feeling people um, have as a response when they're in a situation where they don't understand. Fear can cause people to have a significant impact on their lives and can also cause a lot of problems. Well, on the other hand, phobias are violent illogical fears of specific objects, situations, or roots. They're more extreme than regular fears, causing significant impairment and torture in life. Fear are normally used to overcome by professional help and by their, they're known by their inordinate illogical natures and their degree of impact on their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to understand that fear doesn't appear and disappear at our convenience. It's developed. Specifically, it's developed over seven stages. The first one is alarm. It's the first emotional response to a perceived trouble or peril. The second, resistance. It's where we learn to ignore or avoid the fear. It's known as the fear of fear, and this stage can last for years at a time. The third is the fear itself, which is the violent outbursting emotion sourced from stress or anxiety. The fourth, despair, which is a longing sense of abandonment and loss of stimulation. The fifth, some of you may have heard of, is depression, which is a prolonged period of sadness and misery. It triggers separation, which makes it difficult to connect with the people around us on a deeper level. The sixth is acceptance. It's where we learn to realize that it's all right to be afraid, but we must take the necessary procedures to overcome it. The last stage may be the hardest. It's learning how to manage and control your response to the things that you fear, also known as overcoming fear. This process can last for years at a time, but with professional help from family, friends, or therapists, can definitely be overcome. People have a different way of responding to fear. While some people have different reasons to respond to fear, such as their different reacting mechanisms or their per different personalities and their life events. Some of these types of responses are, for example, fight or flight response. This is a response, this is a well-known response that people probably have heard of, where the body reacts to the response as either defying itself or escaping from the trouble. This affects the body as increased heart rate, rapid fire breathing, and heightened alertness. The second response is the snap response. The snap response is a less well-known response to fear, but can occur in some individuals. This causes the individual to become paralyzed, unfit to or supposed to the threat easily. This mostly occurs in creatures more than humans. And especially, this especially occurs when it is unanticipated. Tend and befriend. This is a response uh, to the place where people are replied to the fear, 
by seeking social support and nurturing connections. This helps them feel more safe and ready to take on their fear more easily. The fawn response. The fawn response is also really less common, similar to the snap response, where people try to avoid or minimize the stress of danger by pleasing or appeasing the threat. For example, someone who has been kidnapped will prefer to be more pleasing to the kidnapper in order to stay safe. Some people also reply by seeking information. They reply to fear by gathering information about their issue or trouble to understand it more, to manage it effectively. It's essential to know that everyone deals with their fear differently. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to dealing with someone's fear. But understanding how one reacts to their fear can help us help ourselves and the people around us. Speaking of our reaction to fear, what happens to us physically and rationally when we come to confront our fears? Well, fear takes a hold of you and overcomes you. And it can trigger all sorts of physiological reactions all through your body. It also triggers a response called the fight or fright response, as I mentioned earlier. And this response further helps you to cope with dangers. Fear can have a huge amount of physical symptoms. It can start us to tremble, it can start sweating, our blood pressure may rise, and even our muscles may rise up. All of these substantial changes get us ready to either fight the fear or um, escape from it. Emotionally, the toll of fear can be even larger. We can start to feel panic, dread, or anxiety, and in the moment, we'll start to feel overpowered and defenseless. Fear can cloud our judgment, making it difficult to make level-head decisions. But worst of all, it triggers separation. It makes it difficult for us to talk and engage with the people around us on a more profound level. Prolonged introduction to fear can lead to stress-related issues, such as stomach-related stomach issues or sleeping disorders. How does anxiety numb our fear? Well, anxiety is a common mental well-being issue that many people struggle with. It puts our bodies in a state of unease or uncomfort. So our brains, our brains focus on the uncomfort state or uncomfortable state in our body instead of tending to the fear. So anxiety smothers the fear instead of understanding the root cause. The more frequent this anxiety becomes, the more difficult it is for us to feel normal emotions, such as bliss, adoration, love, and excitement. And the moment we're stripped away from these feelings is when it's more difficult to connect with the people around us. Anxiety can cause us to create undesirable adapting strategies, such as substance abuse or compulsive behaviors. It may give us temporary relief from our fears, but eventually the cycle repeats itself and comes back to you as, as the cycle of numbness and anxiety. Ladies and gentlemen, today, in conclusion, I hope you learned, we hope you learned, not to only rethink fear, but put a new meaning to it, redefine it. Together, let's face our fears head on, endeavor to overcome them, because it is this, this bravery, that will make a better, brighter, and more innovative future for the generations to come. Thank you.